If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we'll do first is go ahead and draw a free body diagram that shows the forces exerted on the toy chest. So we would have the downward gravitational force, which we can label mg. We have the tension force pulling up and to the right on that toy box, and so we can label that T. The surface is pushing up on the toy box, so we would have Fn. And then we have the frictional force that's opposing the motion of the toy box, and we can call that Fs for static frictional force. For the tension, we're going to have to break it up into its x and y components, and so it might be helpful to first draw in those components. We have the x component pointing to the right, which we can label Tx, and then we have the y component pointing straight up, which we can label Ty. Because Tx is adjacent to this angle in the diagram, we can use the cosine function to actually represent it. But let's take a closer look at that. So we know that the cosine of that angle would equal adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is the force that's marked tension in the diagram. If we solve this for Tx, we could see that it's equal to T cos theta. So we're going to come in and mark the x component T cos theta. And by a similar line of reasoning, we would use sine to represent the y component. So this would be t sine of theta. Once we have the components, it is preferable to eliminate the original tension force. We're only going to be working with the components, so we can kind of delete it or erase it from the picture here. We can next turn to Newton's second law in the y direction, which tells us that the sum of the forces in the y direction will equal the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration in the y direction. Now the toy chest is not accelerating in the y direction, so a y would be zero, making the entire right hand side of the equation zero. For the left side we need to sum up the forces, and we have several forces in the y direction. We have the t sine theta and the fn, which are both positive because they're pointing in the upward or positive y direction. And then we have the downward gravitational force, which is negative, so we would include that in the sum of the forces as well. We can solve this equation for the normal force because it will serve us well la later on in the problem. We would add mg over to the other side and then subtract t sine theta. This expression for normal force will be held on to. We'll turn to the sum of the forces in the x direction and set that equal to ma. The Toy chest also is not accelerating in the x direction, so the right hand side of this equation will also be zero. And then we have two forces acting in the x direction. We have the positive t cos theta, and then we have the negative static frictional force. Now we recall that the static frictional force can be written as the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. And then we will recall that the normal force was solved for earlier in the problem. So we're going to substitute this expression in to Fn of our equation over here. We'll go ahead and then distribute this coefficient of static friction. Once we do that, we'll have mu s mg. And then notice because this negative sign is going to be distributed to this negative sign, we would have plus, we'll write it t mu s sine of theta. And that's still equal to zero, and then we still have t cos theta over here. Let's add the mu s mg over to the right hand side. And then since both terms on the left side of the equation contain t, we can actually factor it out. That would leave us with cos theta plus mu s sine theta inside of the parentheses. And then we're going to solve this equation for this tension force by dividing both sides of the equation by that large quantity in the parentheses. So over here, we would have cos of theta plus mu s sine of theta. Now note that the question itself calls that tension force F. And so we can actually come in here and replace the T that we had used with the letter F. And once we've done that, we can actually plug in the known values to solve for F and therefore get the answer to part A. Remember that theta was 42 degrees. Mg was actually the weight of the toy chest, 180 newtons. So notice we're not plugging in 180 for m. The entire quantity mg is 180 newtons. And then the mu s value was given as 0.42. So let's plug in. 
And then once we compute that, we end up with roughly 74 newtons. And so this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, it's asking us to write an expression for the magnitude of F. We've already done that, in fact. The only thing we can do is plug in the known value of mu s, which was, again, 0.42, and then the weight, mg, of 180 newtons. On the bottom, we're going to leave theta as a variable, and then since we also know mu s, we can plug that in. Now pick up your calculator and you can compute the numerator of this expression. And when you multiply, you should get about 75.6. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. On to part C, which asks us to determine the value of the angle for which this pulling force is a minimum. The fact that the question says a minimum means that we're going to have to compute the derivative of our equation. And that would be true also if it had said a maximum value. So whenever you see minimum or maximum in an advanced physics problem, we're going to have to be computing the derivative. Now we look at our equation, we have f as a function of theta, so our derivative could be expressed as df d theta. That simply means the derivative of the force function with respect to our variable, theta. And we could apply a quotient rule to calculating this derivative. Now the quotient rule tells us to take the bottom function and then multiply it by the derivative of the top function. The top function is a constant, and of course the derivative of a constant is zero. And then we subtract the top function times the derivative of the bottom function. Now the derivative of cos theta is negative sine theta. And then we have this plus sign in the bottom function. And then the derivative of 0.42 sine theta would be 0.42 cos theta. And then this would all be divided by the bottom function, which is right here, squared. Now because this zero is multiplying this entire term here, that's going to actually cancel out. After computing the derivative, in order to minimize our force function, we would have to set the derivative equal to zero. We could put that zero over a one, and then we could cross multiply to simplify this equation. Notice if we cross multiply this way, we're going to have zero multiplied by this quantity, which is going to give us zero, of course. And then if we mul cross multiply in this manner, we're going to have our numerator times one, and of course that would leave us with just the numerator. So we would still have this negative 75.6 multiplied by negative sine theta plus the 0.42 cos theta. We could actually divide both sides of this equation by the negative 75.6 so that it cancels out. This leaves us with negative sine of theta plus 0.42 cos theta still equaling zero. We could then subtract the 0.42 cos theta to the other side. If we divide both sides by negative one, those negatives would cancel out. And then we could divide both sides by cos theta. The cos theta on the right-hand side will cancel out, leaving us with just 0.42. Now sine over cosine, of course, is tangent. And then if we take the inverse tangent of both sides of this equation, we will see that the angle is roughly 23 degrees. So this would be the correct answer to part C. And then for part D, we simply plug this value back into our force function. And after plugging in the angle into the force equation, you should get a force of roughly 69.6 or 70 newtons. And so this would be the correct answer to part D.